According to the latest report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the damage being inflicted on our environment is more significant, more rapid and worse than previously estimated. However, researchers from the Australian National University are optimistic that we have the tools and knowledge to tackle the crisis head on. One of the report's authors, Professor Mark Howden, joins us now to explain the findings and talk us through what action we can take to mitigate the effects of climate change. Professor Howden, so how does the new report compare to previous estimates of the impacts of climate change? I think the overall takeaway is that uh, we've been underestimating impacts. Uh, when we look at the new literature and evidence, uh, it seems that for any given temperature increase, we see worse impacts than previously estimated and our adaptation effect ad adaptation effectiveness is less than previously assessed. So by and large, things are looking worse. And, and also in terms of emissions, uh, our, our emissions continue to increase. They're at record levels uh, and we've got record levels of greenhouse gas concentrations and record levels of temperature increase as well. So um, by and large, it's actually a story which is more challenging, um, but at the same time, we have uh, explored more options to deal with the challenges we have ahead of us. So one of the things that your report highlighted was the timeline for reaching that 1.5 degrees Celsius of global warming. What, what was your report's findings on that kind of time scale that we've got? Yeah, so essentially we're likely to meet uh, 1.5 or exceed 1.5 degrees uh, by the 2030s, uh, and that's under all different greenhouse gas emission scenarios. Under a low emission scenario, a very low emission scenario, we may temporarily exceed 1.5 degrees and then come back down. Uh, that's what we call an overshoot scenario. Uh, but at the moment, we're heading well above any of those overshoot scenarios. At the moment, we're heading for 3.2 degrees uh, increase above pre-industrial levels. And that's a huge increase in global temperatures. So obviously, something needs to be done quite urgently. So what immediate action does the IPCC recommend based on your report's findings? Well, the IPCC doesn't make recommendations, but it does lay out the evidence. And, and the evidence is that we have a huge number of emission reduction options which are viable to implement. So things which we know how to implement, we can implement it relatively cost effectively, uh, and uh, they are often compatible with our existing systems. So, for example, just think renewable energy. And so, roughly speaking, um, we have in the kit bag around about uh, half of our emission reductions could be implemented by things that we already know about, which are relatively low cost. They're either negative cost, we make a profit, or they're relatively low cost. And so um, the problem is, of course, we're not implementing those at a, um, emission reduction options quick enough. And similarly, we have lots and lots of adaptation options, uh, which we know how to implement. We know something about their effectiveness. Uh, but again, we're not implementing those fast enough. And what are the barriers in place at the moment to those implementing them a lot faster? Oh, there's there's lots and lots. Uh, you know, the way things have been done around here, type sort of mentalities, uh, risk aversion, referencing to uncertainty, uh, uh, financial barriers, institutional barriers, social, social psychological barriers. There's a whole stack of them, um, and uh, and and often people uh, are much more interested in finding reasons why not to do things rather than exploring the options to do things and the benefits from doing things differently. So it all does sound still quite alarming. Where are you finding the positivity after looking at the results of this report? Well, we are making inroads in terms of emission reduction. So our, our emissions, while they're still going up and we're getting record levels of emissions year after year at the moment, but they're not going up as quickly as they used to. And so they are starting to level off. Uh, we are starting to see massive rollouts of renewable electricity uh, generation right across the globe. Its price has come down, the price of electricity storage has come down, and there's new technologies being explored almost every day, things like you know low emissions aviation solutions, uh, similar things. We're seeing new battery technologies and new ways of organising our electricity grid, and those sorts of things are happening you know, day by day and week by week, and so there's hope coming from those things. And there's also hope that we're actually generating the momentum in the public and also in governments to take climate change much more seriously. And this is transferring into the industry sector where um, companies, at least some companies, are starting to take climate change seriously. 
and those that don't take it seriously are getting pushed by investors and insurers uh, and regulators as well. So what more needs to be done to kind of push the policymakers, business leaders and members of the public in the right direction when it comes to that urgency about climate change? I think a lot of it comes down to just saying that we expect more and we expect better. Uh, when we look at the Australians' attitudes on climate change, the overwhelming majority of Australians want more action on climate change. Um, so the Lowy Institute poll for many years now has shown that 90 per cent of Australians want more action on climate change. Uh, and so that's a pretty overwhelming number. Um, what I would like to see is, is governments and business responding to that overwhelming sentiment and giving people options for low emissions activity, low emissions services and goods, uh, which actually can be at a good price point. And so people will adopt them. Uh, they'll feel better off uh, for doing that. Um, there's new market opportunities. They, the businesses are better off and the planet's better off as well. And of course, future generations are going to be better off as well. And in the meantime, what can individuals do to kind of help? Well, firstly, I think we want to get informed, um, informed about the, the bigger picture of climate change. The IPCC reports are a great source of that. They're the most robust uh, reports on the topic and they're easily accessible. Just a click on the web can deliver those to you. Um, secondly, I think informed about our own footprint. So do a greenhouse gas calculation for yourself or for your family and uh, find out where those sources of greenhouse gases are coming from and what you can do sensibly to reduce those. And then I think, um, as I mentioned before, push up into systems, uh, push up into the governmental system, tell our elected representatives that we want something more done on climate change. Yes, for example, the electric vehicle strategy is good, but is it going fast enough and far enough? For example, people have said we should have targets for electric vehicles. So push into the system, say we expect more, um, and start to, I think, um, talk with others, particularly those who aren't engaged in climate change or who are sceptical, and actually generate conversations which are respectful and which demonstrate uh, the changes that we're seeing with, you know, the changes that we're seeing are now unequivocal. Um, they, they are not debatable from a science point of view. The thing that is debatable is what do we do about it? You know, do we put on a price on carbon or do we to use some other regulatory mechanism? Do we rely on technology to deliver the goods? Those are all legitimate debates to have. But let's stop arguing about the climate science and let's move on to the solutions.